Hi there, it's Vivi Cameron here for Knit and Tangle. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be making this card and I'm going to be using some of the supplies from the October release. So these products are very new and I'm going to be using this stamp here which is called Backdrop to apply a mirror image technique. This stamp is completely clear as you can see there and it's good to apply a wide variety of techniques or you can do some stamping as well. Just simply stamping. I'm going to use also Get Jetty Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. And I'm also going to be using Hello Winter Stamp Set. I'm going to be using this large stamp here and this one as well. Okay, to make this card, I'm going to use an A4 sheet of cardstock and I'm going to cut it like so at 4 inches. And then I'm going to cut here the paper at 6 inches and a half. And I'm also going to cut this other piece of paper I have left at six inches and a half so it's the same length of this piece of paper here and this is going to be the card base and I'm using here regular smooth cardstock this is 210 grams and it's good for stamping so I'm going to grab a piece of paper and I'm going to tear it like so so that I can create a mask to protect that area there on the paper. So I'm going to apply some inks by Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to be using Cotton Candy, which is a very soft pink. And this ink here, which is a apricot, is a peach color and just beautiful. So I'm just going to apply like so there. And you will notice that you will see all the marks of the blending tool. Don't worry about that when you are doing this, because once you start applying the lighter inks and you blend all together those marks are going to disappear this cardstock is not that great for applying distress inks or inks like that so that's why if you get for example bristol paper or another smooth cardstocks you're not going to have these troubles but i really want to use this paper which is called whisper white cardstock because it's just beautiful for stamping and has some dreaming to stamp that large sentiment from hello winter stamp set here I'm just thinking in the future of this card and I really want to use this cardstock. It's just me being a little bit stubborn. So I'm going to use here Docklin, which is a yellow ink. And if you see, I'm not applying any strain or any pressure on the paper. And I'm sorry because my table was moving all around. So I'm just going very soft and slow. And you know, with these inks, I'm trying to create a sunset. So here in Scotland, we have this beautiful beach sunsets and in winter you will imagine a sky just white or blue but here actually is really red sometimes or purple so I thought about that when I was making this card and I thought okay I don't want to make a purple a blue background I want to make a pink background so yeah yesterday I was dreaming about this card and I was thinking what colors I should use you know I tried to think before <laughs> so I don't spend a lot of time trying different things. I apply a little bit of water and then, you know, this paper doesn't react so nice with the water, uh, but I just use a heat tool and all is fine. And then I come with a little bit more of ink if I feel I need to. So you can create these backgrounds in any color you want and they will be just beautiful. And once I finish, I place a clear block on top of that paper to keep it flat. Now I'm going to use my stamping platform. This is the Tim Holtz stamping platform. And I'm going to place a piece of craft foam. This is an expensive craft foam and it will make all the difference when using this platform. So now I'm going to use a piece of Bristol paper and I'm going to place my stamp like so. And I'm going to stamp using Versa Fine Ink. And something I want to share with you here is that when you stamp on Bristol paper with this ink, the ink tend to take a little bit longer to dry, even longer when I multi-stamp that image because there is more ink on that paper, right? So all I need to do is to allow the ink to dry or use a heat tool to heat set it. Sometimes, you know, I don't do that and I touch the image by accident or I start coloring and the ink bleed and I damage my images and I'm like, oh no, anyway. <laughs> so I clean my stamp and I'm going to place it there and just in front of the stamp in the platform I'm going to place this stamp called backdrop. I'm going to apply ink to the image like so and I'm going to re-ink the stamp and stamp again 
three times. And then I'm going to transfer that ink on the paper like so. And you will want that paper to be stuck onto the backdrop stamp. So you can rub the back of the paper with your fingertips. Take your time because you are transferring that ink on that paper. Remember that to get crisp image on Bristol paper, you need to stamp twice and you have here one chance. So this is the result and I think it's quite good for being a mirror image. So all you have to do is to clean your stamp and you will be done. That's all you have to do to get a mirror image. These images here are stamped on Whisper White cardstock, so you can see a little bit the difference. You get a more crisp image because Bristol paper uh, requires a little bit more stamping, as I said before. You can also rescue any line that you don't get in that mirror image using a microfine tip pen or marker. So now I'm going to stamp the little beard in the stamp set here. And after that, I'm going to apply a very easy coloring technique using water-based markers. These are six or Kuretake Gansai Clean Color Real Brush. And all I do is I just apply the pen directly on the cardstock in some areas like that. And then with the water brush, I just spread the ink. I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow here and there because I want the light of the background to be reflected on the jetties. And I'm also want these uh, images to coordinate with the background colors. So if you see here, I'm going to bring the background paper and you will see that it kind of coordinates. So when I put everything together, that's going to look harmonic. And I like to use a microfine tip pen to go over the lines of the stamped images. More in this one because it's a mirror image. And I also like to add some dots here and there. I think that really adds a nice accent to the images. And I like to add a little bit of blue or over the eyes of the critters, any critter, doesn't matter. And I'm going to use also a little bit of this gray ink, just a wash of that gray ink to go over the face so it's not completely pink but it's a little bit gray as well and now I'm going to use the dye to dye coat the images I'm going to show you how to dye coat the mirror image as well using the same dye so this is my dye coat here and this is the little beard and now uh, if you have a source of light for example a window all I need you to do is to place the paper facing that window and of course this have to be do, done during the day so you can have the light of the sun there and you can see where to place the dye in the back of the image i sadly when i was editing the video i noticed that i missed that clip so i just repeat the uh, how i could this just to show you so you see there the dye is in the back of the image but it's going to cut the image absolutely perfect you don't have to be worried about the age or anything because it's just absolutely perfect. You see the die cut? So you don't need to use scissors, but if you want, you can use scissors, of course. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be my scene. I need to stamp the background with the large sentiment. I'm also going to stamp a wee banner, and I'm also going to stamp the sentiment at the bottom of this panel. And here I'm using Versa Fine ink again. And why I like Versafine ink that much is because when I clean my stamps, my stamps look 
actually clean. <laughs> so it's really easy to clean from your stamps. It's really black and nice, but if you touch it, because it's just fresh, you are going to get a mess in your cardstock. I want to show you here a sample. So if you stamp there, well, this is just not a perfect sample, but you see the ink tends to move a little bit. And that's just a, I'm just using a, the ink that I was left on the stamp. So I'm going to stamp again. So you can see that when you stamp and you slightly touch that ink, the ink is going to move. Actually, it's behaving really well today. But when you multi-stamp and multi-stamp and you just accidentally pass your fingers over that ink and you don't allow the ink to dry, you're going to damage your image. So honestly, let that image to dry. Clean your stamp so your stamp is going to look like new always using this ink. And that's it. Now I'm going to stamp this sentiment at the bottom of that panel using the same VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Okay, because this is a love card, I'm going to use this stamp set here and I'm going to grab this stamp that says you and me. So this was the part of the sentiment that was missing. So I'm just going to stamp this with Versa Mark ink. This is a clear ink and I'm going to emboss this using white embossing powder. This is the tail embossing powder by Tonic Studios. And I got my banners. I'm just going to cut this using scissors and to get rid of that powder from the anti-static tool, I'm going to use a brush. Now I have all the elements to put my card together and I'm going to be using these sticky tombs, which are my favorite dimensionals ever. And then when I was uh, assembling these or laying down my images, I noticed that something is missing. So I'm going to stamp some of the mountains here at the background and I'm going to use the stamping platform to do that. At this stage, I don't want to mess up my panel. <laughs> so it's always good to have these stamping platforms. And I still don't know why I have these mixed feelings regarding the use of these platforms because you know, stampers like to use clear blocks, stamp magic, that kind of stuff. But to be honest, I will never be able to stamp this card without it. It's just absolutely essential and it's also always near me i could not stamp the mirror image this way you know my first video in youtube was about mirror image and i was using a technique that is good but you require a lot of practice with the stamping platform and the backdrop stamp you can create reflections of any image in seconds effortless trust me just give it a try so now i'm going to add a dark edge to the die cuts. I normally do this before sticking them down, but I forgot because I was so excited here talking. <laughs> so I'm going to do it now, and this is how I do it. And hey, for a quick stamping, and I know I'm not getting this wrong, I'm going to use a clear block, and I'm going to stamp some snowflakes. So my panel is finished, and I'm going to bring the card base, and I think the panel looks nice on white, but it looks better on black. So yes, that's the choice. You can change your mind many times when you are crafting. So the car is okay, but I decided to apply a little bit of shimmery pen on the images. You know, the shimmer pen is going to make the ink to bleed a little bit. So you need to apply that with a lot of caution. And I'm going also to add a little bit of glitter and also sequins by Neat and Tangle. I have here in my hand this one, which is called Crystal Clear Mix, and this one, which is called Light Magic. They go well with everything. So I'm going to use this one here called Light Magic, and it's Light Magic actually, because the cards look super nice when you add those sequins, and I'm going to add a similar glitter by Nubo, or by Tonic Studio, sorry. It is completely optional, of course, not necessary, but I think it looks quite nice. And to finish, I also added to the eyes of the Yetis um, a enamel drop in a black color. And I also add lashes and a bow to the Yeti there because she is a girl. And my card is finished. And I wanted to share with this sample a couple of techniques and also the way to build messages by mixing and matching stamp sets. This is not 
a love theme or friendship stamp set. This is a stamp to celebrate the season or winter. But you can turn this into a card like this one. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. And you can order the supplies I have used in this video from the links in the video description. Affiliate links apply. This means that when you buy from the links below the video or the links in my blog, I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.